Hello and welcome back to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung and we're going to take a politically incorrect way of route summarization for CCNAs. So route summarization is one of those topics that gets a lot of people because first, they don't understand why they're doing it. And second, they don't understand the different steps that it can take to get a correct summary. So first of all, why should we start doing it? Well, it's very easy. If we take a look here on the right hand side, I'm going to draw out a very simple topology. Let's say we've got a R1, we've got R2, and we have R3. So we got three routers connected. And let's say on router three, I have a bunch of loopbacks. Whole bunch of loopbacks. 172, 16, something. So 172, 16.1. 172.16.2.3.4 all the way up to something like 62. So I've got 1 through 62. I've got them all on loopback addresses and on my entire network I'm running OSPF. So what's going to happen here is R2, if I look in R2's routing table, so if I show IP route and I'm going to have an exercise attached to this YouTube video, just go into the details page click on that, that's a GNS3 file that you can download that will have this topology in this practice file. So if you show IP route, what's going to happen on R2 is you're going to see a bunch of routes, uh, something in the neighborhood of 62, 63 routes. That's a lot of routes. So with route summarization, what we can do is I can go on router one and I can send a signal, I can type in a command that will take all 62, 63 of those routes and shrink it down to a single route, one route. And it's going to make my routing table a lot, uh, a lot leaner. It's going to make everything more stable. And the reason it's more stable is if anything happens to these, these loopbacks over here, it's not going to freak out router two. Router two is going to have a uh, no clue what's going on. Basically, it's going to have just be looking at that single summary route. So that's why we do route summarization. We send a bigger route to capture all the smaller routes and compact our routing table. So the different steps we have, we've got the uh, steps down here that I've labeled out. We're going to go through them one by one, but I want you to answer or continuously ask yourself these three questions while you're doing route summarization. And I like to think of this as you know, you've got a, you're in your front yard, your front lawn, and you've got one of those water hoses. You know, you connect the water hose to the spout, you turn the spout, and then water comes out. Now, as a kid, hopefully all of you have played with a water hose and you've put your finger over the hose. And let's say this is the hose, the end of the hose. You put your finger over here and then you can make the water come out really wide or you can make the water come out in like a, a very narrow stream. So when you're playing around with this, just imagine that you've got a bunch of people and we will substitute people for the subnets, right? You've got a bunch of people lined up against the wall or on the sidewalk or or just somewhere in front of you, and you need to hit them with the water. So a couple questions you have to ask yourself while you're doing that is, how big of a spread should you have? You know, if there's a lot of people, you're going to need a lot of spread. If there's not that many people, it's going to be a narrow, narrower spread. Also, you should ask yourself, where do I begin shooting the water? So who's the first person I should hit? Should Am I dealing with that person? Am I dealing with that person? Maybe I'm dealing with this person. So you're going to aim your water hose for that particular person, and then you're going to decide how much of a spread you have. So continuously ask yourself those two questions, along with the final question, you don't want to hit too many people. So you're playing around with your friends, you're all horsing around. That's kind of a weird head there, but uh, you're playing around with your buddies. And then you've got kind of this, this outlier here in green. And this, this person, this person is a cop. He's walking around. He's a police officer. And some, for some reason, he's walking in your front lawn. And if you're playing around with the water hose, it would kind of suck if you hit all three with the water. Uh, you probably could get shot. So what we want to do is we want to make sure our summary does not hit too many subnets. That's going to cause the world to be very angry at you. Okay, let's take a look at a practice problem. And with that practice problem, we're going to be able to look through our steps and basically follow them through and you'll get the process down. And if you do these steps over and over again, 
do them a couple times, a couple times a day. Eventually, after about three or four days, you're going to have this in your muscle memory and route summarization will not be a problem. Okay, let's take a look at our practice problems here. Bring in notepad. So we've got practice problem one. This is very typical of how you will be given a route summarization problem. They were going to, they will give you a bunch of networks along with subnet mass. So they will say, okay, we've given you these four networks, 10, 150, 10, 148, 46, 52. They're all a slash 23. And we want you to find a summary route, a route summary that will fit all of these without going overboard, without containing too much. So our first order of business is we need to rewrite the networks into a lowest to highest order. So rewrite them in a lowest to highest order. Very easy. If you're doing this in Notepad, it's actually very easy because what you can do is you can, you can hit enter a whole bunch of times. And if you want to make your life easier in Notepad, you can change the format and the font to give yourself a bigger font like this. Because normally the font in Notepad is pretty small. Okay, so these are the original four networks that you've been given. I'm going to reorder them. 10, 1, let's see, the lowest one is a 46. And the next one is a 48. 10, 1, looks like the next one's a 50. And then we have a 52. So those are my four networks ordered from lowest to highest. Our next step, step two, is going to find the interesting octet. Now, what the heck is the interesting octet? The interesting octet is the one that, that looks like it's changing, that looks the most interesting. So the octets here are these sections right here. We've got four octets here. And as we look from left to right, we see that the first one, it's kind of boring because they don't change, they're all tens. This first section here, that's all ones. That's, that's pretty boring. But this third octet here, you can see that the numbers are changing there. We've got a 46, 48, a 50, and a 52. So this is our most interesting octet, okay? It's our most interesting octet. So what we do with this most interesting octet is we're going to expand the numbers here into binary bits. So currently we're in decimal format, the 46, 48, 50, and 52. We need to convert them into binary. And what you should probably do is do this in your calculator, your Windows calculator, because it's got a programming mode that will allow you to convert to binary and decimal very easily. So you just open up calculator and then if you don't know how to get to this mode right here you're going to go to programmer mode and then click on decimal DEC. And here what you could do is you could kind of put your calculator somewhere like that, type in the number 46 and then click on binary to get the binary bits. Not octet, if you remember correctly, is 8 bits. You'll see that here I only have 6 bits. And what you can imagine here is if you don't have complete 8 bits here, you just put zeros in front until you end up with 8 of them. So what this means is if I just go down, let's move this over here. If I go down here, if I just copy what's in my calculator, you'll see that I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So all I need to do is put two more, and that gives me eight digits. Also, what I want to do is, you don't have to do this, but uh, I like it because it makes everything more readable, is I'm going to put a little space in between the fourth and fifth octets, or fourth and fifth bits. Basically, I split, split the eight into two parts of four. Okay, now for 48, I'm going to go back to decimal, hit delete, 48, convert it to binary, is one one zero 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 so that's six numbers right there gonna add two zeros that gives me eight in total and then pop a space in there next up is 40 is 50 right? 50 convert that to binary that gives me the number that gives me the number one one zero zero one zero and add two zeros in front to give it eight digits and we hit a space in the middle and then our final number is 52 we'll go back to calculator 52 convert to binary it's going to be one one zero one zero zero 
add our two numbers to get eight digits and we put a space in between the fourth and the fifth digits so there we go that was finding the interesting octet that was the third octet also converting that octet into binary so we took all these decimal numbers and converted them into binary pretty easy stuff next what we want to do is we want to find the matching bits the matching bits what that means is we look through these digits here and we see from left to right which ones which columns are the same have all the same numbers so going from left to right we can see that uh, the first column there looks pretty good everything's a zero that second column there everything's a zero pretty good and then the third column everything's a one life is good and then finally when everything changes right here you could see we got three ones and a zero so number four is a no-go we're gonna we're gonna stop right here in this third bit there third bit so we went three spots over we went one two three that was our matching bit what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a box around this and we're gonna convert this to decimal and the way we do this is hopefully on the piece of paper somewhere you've got your binary cheater sheet and that binary cheater sheet should start with 128 64 32 16 8 4 and you get the point and you can do this in your test on that piece of paper that you get at the testing center and what you'll do is we see here that we have 0 0 1 so what we do from left to right 0 0 1 and because we got a 1 below the 32 we just add this up we have a 32 now because we're dealing with the third octet the way we're going to write this is 10 1 we have the third octet is our interesting octet we added everything up here and we got the number 32 so our network is 10 1 32 0 10 1 32 0 now going back to our three questions that we have to answer 10 1 32 0 where should I start shooting my water hose? Where should I start shooting my water hose? I'm going to start shooting at 10, 1, 32, 0. That is where our water hose is going to start shooting. Now our next question is how big of a spread? How big of a spread do I need to hit all of these other targets? And we're going to be able to answer that very easily. So we've done step 4, find the matching bits. We did step 5, convert the matching bits to decimal. That gives us our starting number, or where we need to shoot. How big of a spread? So we take a look over here. We found that we were able to go over three spots. One, two, three. If we go back to our cheater sheet, cheater binary sheet, 128, 64, 32, and so on, if we put numbers 1, 2, 3, what we find is if we add everything up, 128 plus 64 gives us 192, 192, 224. So we should have the number 224, 224. Now, if we wanted to write this in a different way, this would give us a slash 19. Why a slash 19? Because we were working here in the third octet, we have 8 matching here. We have 8 matching here. That gives us 16. As we go from left to right, that's 17, 18, and 19. So slash 19 is equal to 224. So now what we can do is we can write it out. Slash 19. And if you want, 255, 255, 224.0, 224.0. And this should, this should make sense. Now we can do a quick gut check. We do a, a sanity check here. And the way we do our sanity check is we look at our third octet there, our 32. This 224 here, that's our mask. Now to get what's called the magic number, what we can do is we could take the number 
256 minus 224, 224, that gives us the number 32. If we take this 32 and add another 32 to it, we'll get 10.164.0. 10.164.0. And if we look at all of our networks here, we'll see that 46, 48, 50, and 52 all fit within this range of 32 to 64. 32 to 64. Right? So 10.132.0 slash 19. It's also 255.255.254. That is our answer for this particular range of subnets. Okay, so we have, just to summarize, our five steps here. We want to rewrite the networks. Rewrite the network. So we were given this set of four subnets. We rewrote them from lowest to highest. That's probably the easiest part of, of these seven steps, just rewriting them. Then we found the interesting octet. The interesting octet was the third octet here because that's the only part that changes. Then we converted them to binary. We, con we took this out, this section, converted them into binary, whatever it was. Then we found the matching bits and we saw that the matching bits was three digits over. Three digits over. And it was zero zero one. Then we took the zero zero one. We looked at our cheater sheet for binary. Well, we just put the zero here, the zero here, and the one there. And we get our starting network. Who we want to shoot? Who do we want to start shooting with the water? 10, 1, 32, 0. And to find out our spread, how many people we want to hit with the water, then what we do is we take a look. Well, we knew that we started, we have three bits, three bits for this. So what we do is we take, go back to our cheater sheet. We add them up, the first three spots, 128, 64, 32. That gives us 224. 224, so 255, 255, 2240. And if you want to write it by the slash notation, we started off, if we're dealing with the third octet, this is 8, this is 8, so that gives us 16. We go three spots, so 17, 18, 19, slash 19. All right, so this was our somewhat politically incorrect guide to route summarization, a how-to guide for route summarization for CCNA. I'm going to make this part one. In part two, we're going to go over a two to three more practice problems just so you guys can get it and you can follow along. If you want, grab a piece of paper, a pen, and come back for part two of our how-to guide on route summarization.